Hi and welcome to another physics lesson and in this lesson we are looking at the concept of momentum. Okay, so what is momentum? Well, I'm sure you've heard of it before and you have uh, probably an intuitive understanding of what it is. Uh, but basically it's just a measure of um, how difficult it would be to stop something. A measure of, let's call it stopping difficulty. That's definitely not a concept but you understand. Stopping difficulty. Difficulty. So, how difficult is it to stop a moving object? Okay, so let me give you two examples. Okay, first of all, let's imagine we have a cyclist. Okay, we have a cyclist pedaling away at 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, now you have to choose whether you want to stop this dude or an elephant. Okay, an elephant ballooning at you at 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, which, which one would you rather want to be um, in the way of? Both are going at the same velocity, so which one will you choose to stop? Well, all the sane ones of you would probably have seen, well, I'd rather stop the cyclist, which means you mean that the elephant is more difficult to stop. His momentum will be larger, even though he's going at the same velocity, his momentum will be larger. Why? Okay, I'm sure all of you know it's his mass. It's his mass that makes the difference. Okay, so momentum, the, the letter we use for momentum is a P. Okay, and we notice here that P, the momentum of an ob object in motion, um, is directly proportional to the mass of that object. So momentum is directly proportional to mass. Okay, let's look at another option. Okay, this time uh, let's take a flying beetle. Okay, a flying beetle. And he's darting at you, B double E, sorry, he's darting at you at about 5 meters per second. Okay, now you get to choose either you have to stop this flying beetle or you have to stop let's say a bullet okay and this bullet is heading to you at 200 meters per second okay so which one will you choose well there's no question you definitely rather stop the flying beetle you'd rather catch a flying beetle with your mouth than try and stop a bullet won't you okay and again this time the reason is a little bit different. They might have more or less the same mass, a flying beetle and a bullet might weigh about, well, I don't know, uh, 100 grams or whatever, but the velocity is this time the difference. If the flying beetle was traveling at 200 meters per second, you will also not want to stop it. Okay, so this time we see the velocity is another thing that we have to consider, and again, the greater the velocity, the greater the momentum. In other words, mom sorry, it's not, not bad. Momentum is directly proportional to velocity as well. And the formula in the end actually is very, very simple. Momentum is simply the product of mass times velocity. And here we can see if mass goes up, momentum will go up. If velocity goes up, momentum will go up. Same with the converse. If it goes down, it will go down. Okay, so that's simple. Momentum is the product of mass times velocity. Now looking at the units, the units are actually very easy. Okay, and momentum doesn't have its own unique unit. We use the units of the product. So what we have is that the unit for momentum is for mass, kilograms, and for velocity times meter per second. And that's the units that we are going to use. Now one last thing, momentum is a vector. Okay. Momentum is a vector, which means it has direction. If it is positive, if we get a positive answer and we're only moving uh, in 
one dimension, in other words along a straight line, then positive means I'm moving in the same direction as my velocity. Okay, if it's negative, then I'm moving in the opposite direction of the direction I originally chose as positive. Okay, so just remember momentum is a vector and therefore we also indicate direction. The next video we'll look at an example.